Good morning and welcome to Weymouth Beach. But here's the unexpected bit. I'm not even actually in Weymouth. In this video, I'll explain all about this and nine other unexpected facts about Weymouth. Anyway, if I'm on Weymouth Beach but not actually in Weymouth, how does that work? Well, the unexpected bit is, all the beach area, all the area around the shops, and everywhere that the tourists come to and consider to be Weymouth, is actually a place called Milcombe Regis. And the only real Weymouth is actually the bit on the other side of the river. The bit now known as the South Harbour side. Back in the day, Weymouth and Milcombe Regis were actually competing ports on opposite sides of the River Way. There used to be fighting and even riots would break out. The rivalry was that fierce. Even the leaders of the two boroughs were in constant battles with each other. So in 1571, Queen Elizabeth I finally got so fed up with the feuding that an act of parliament was brought about and the two boroughs of Weymouth and Milcombe Regis were combined under the name of Weymouth and Milcombe Regis. Over the years though, Milcombe Regis has dropped out and the whole area is now known as Weymouth. Although many maps still show this area as Milcombe Regis and you will get the odd local try and confuse you by telling you that you're not actually in Weymouth. You know, if you'd have walked along here back in those days with an I Love Weymouth t-shirt on, if such a thing existed then, then they would have took to it so badly they'd have probably dragged you down here to the river, thrown you in and made you swim across to Weymouth. Which is a very poor for a segue to my next unexpected fact about Weymouth, even if it is a little bit more of a trivial fact. Every year here on Christmas Day, around 500 arguably brave and arguably stupid people brave the cold water to swim from one side of the river to the other in an annual event that attracts around 2,000 people down to the harbour to watch and raises some much needed money for a number of local charities. I have been arguably brave, but yeah, probably stupid enough to do it myself a couple of times. And I can advise anyone that wants to have a go to make sure when you get out afterwards, you get dried and dressed as quickly as possible. You don't want to be catching your death, do you? And that's another rather dodgy segue into my next unexpected fact about Wayne. In 1347, the Black Death or Bubonic Plague swept across the world, killing more people than anything before it or since. It's thought to have come into England in 1348 via a cargo ship that docked right here in Weymouth, apparently. Personally, I think they got it wrong. It must have been Milk and Regis. Just to let you know, if you see any adverts on this video, there's nothing to do with me and I'm not making a penny out of it. To be honest, I've probably never reached the threshold for YouTube to pay me any of it either, so... Currently, the only reward I get from making these videos the likes and nice comments that I get from some of you people at home, so yeah, please do like it and comment, if you have liked the video that is. And of course if you want to see more videos like this then it's always a good idea to subscribe because you'll find more like this on this channel. And there'll be more like this coming in the future. No cleverly contrived segue for this next bit of uh, unexpected Weymouth information, but hopefully I'm going to bring you bang up to date. You probably already know about Weymouth's glorious beach that I'm on here and how it ranks highly every year in any survey to find the best beaches in the country. But did you know about Weymouth's vibrant nightlife? There's an absolute plethora of bars, restaurants, nightclubs, even a theatre. Young or old, you'll always find something to do in Weymouth of a weekend and if you know where to look, even on a weekday too. The harbour here made Weymouth strategically important during the English Civil War. The Duke of Monmouth wanted to control Weymouth so that he could use it to bring gold ashore so he could pay his armies. Without that, the war would have ended much sooner. But one of the bloodiest battles of the whole conflict happened right here in Weymouth. 
It's referred to these days as the Crabtree Conspiracy and there's a great book about it which I'll, uh, I'll put a link to in the description of this video. It all culminated though in our final battle right here in Old Weymouth High Street, now High West Street. And standing here now, you know, I can almost imagine it. The Royalist Army led by Lord Goring pouring down this street, forcing their way through hastily constructed barrier after hastily constructed barrier in an attempt to retake the chapel fort of St Nicholas after Colonel William Sydenham had rather opportunistically taken it earlier in the day. But really a whole army funnelled into this one narrow little street would have been easy pickings for the parliamentarian soldiers manning the top of the hill. It must have been a massacre against overwhelming numerical odds. As I say it's a really interesting book so I highly recommend you take a chance to read it. Okay, I'm going to include this one, even though it's caused controversy in the past. I made this claim before and somebody else told me it happened somewhere different, but I'm going to go with it because it's on Wikipedia, it's been reported by the local paper, so it's good enough for me. The famous bouncing bomb of Dan Buster's fame. It received its first full-scale testing on the Fleet Lagoon, just on the other side of town. I found out it was actually built by Vickers Armstrong and they operated the Whitehead's Torpedo Factory at the other end of town, so that fits as well. Weymouth was also a major embarkation point for the D-Day landings and many American soldiers were based here waiting for the big day to come. That's probably not so unexpected with the size of the harbour and this close, close proximity to France. But did you know they filmed scenes from the 2017 film Dunkirk right here in Weymouth? The unexpected bit was seeing a very 21st century viewing tower that stood here in Weymouth back in 2017. In the background as Harry Styles and co were boarding their boat to go out on what was probably the greatest rescue mission ever. Now Weymouth is one of the few remaining seaside resorts to still have a Punch and Judy show. I mean how cool is that? Quick disclaimer, I don't approve of anyone being hit over the head with a big baton and I also need to point out that no puppets were harmed in the making of this video. Oh yeah, and don't feed sausages to crocodiles. Back in 2012, the greatest show on earth, also known as the Olympic Games, came to good old London town. But of course you can't really hold world class sailing races on the River Thames. So all of the sailing events are actually held down here in Weymouth. The legacy from that is we now have a world class sailing centre, great sailing training facilities and all the possible water sports you could imagine. They also built an excellent relief road so getting in and out of town is so much easier than it used to be. If you remember visiting Weymouth years ago and found it really hard getting in and out of town, that's all changed now. Now this one was unexpected when I found out about it. Picture the scene, I was at a barbecue at my sister's house, enjoying a drink and a bit of socialising. Now Russ, my sister's partner, loves music and in particular he loves vintage vinyl. So in between flipping burgers he was playing a 7 and 12 inch singles which was really adding to the relaxed atmosphere you normally get at a barbecue. Anyway he played this old 80s song, it's called Echo Beach and it's by Martha and the Muffins, I don't know if you remember it, they're a Canadian band and I love the song. As a London boy growing up miles away from any beach, I longed to be by the sea and feel the sea breeze on my face. So the words of this song really meant something to me. Anyway, imagine my surprise when I looked at, looked at the record sleeve and saw a picture I recognised. Bearing in mind they're Canadian, how would they even know that this little outcrop outside of not even Weymouth's main beach, out on the outskirts, how would they know there was even a beach here? And it's a long way from Sunnyside Beach on the banks of Lake Ontario where apparently Mark Gain the band member who wrote the song had in mind. Although strangely enough I have looked at pictures of that beach and although it is very different it does have some striking similarities. So anyway that was 10 quite varied unexpected facts about Weymouth and I hope that you found some of this interesting and maybe learnt one or two things along the way. 
And if you want to see more about Weymouth, I'll link a, a coast path walk that I did from Weymouth in the top corner of this video and in the bottom corner I'll link a video full of very interesting facts about a place very near here. And of course the round icon is the quickest way to subscribe. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all again soon on the next one.